great uh, roundtable uh, discussion. Um, Mr. Ashik Ashraf, Mr. Kisamba Tambwe, reps from Microsoft, CEOs of SMEs, invited guests, my friends from the media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, I, I feel very honored to be invited to join you this uh, morning. Um, and my special thanks go to Microsoft, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, gentlemen. Is there a lady? What a gentleman. And lady and gentlemen. I will try to be brief, uh, hopefully the point, and hopefully I'll be able to deliver a few remarks that uh, are relevant to this round table. My name is Roger Mengi. You know me and I know you. As business persons in the uh, digital age, we have no choice but to, to store a substantial amount of, and sometimes not a substantial amount, but all our business, inf business information and communications on digital devices. Digital devices also generate our most sensitive documents, such as payrolls, receipts, and accounts. We also communicate with our customers, financiers, lawyers, and, in, and internally with our employees and colleagues through emails and other digital information systems. If this information is not secure, it can lead to unpleasant consequences for the business in question. We have all heard of uh, companies whose computers have been hacked such as uh, Sony Pictures, which was hacked by cyber criminals back in November 24th, 2014. And confidential data, including personal information about employees and their families, emails between employees and information about executive salaries of the company, copies of uh, the then released Sony films and other information were re released. The damage to Sony was huge, but the effects of hacking for a small or medium enterprise SME in our region are just as bad, if not worse. Imagine what would happen if your payroll or tender documents or business plan were made visible to your competitors Everyone, including your customers and employees, would immediately lose trust in you. It is also very likely that you would never, never recover. In this age of e-commerce, where the World Wide Web represents and presents a huge market, your business transactions are potentially vulnerable. So keeping your digital information secure is extremely critical. Unfortunately, however, cyber criminals have become very skilled and developed highly sophisticated ways of hack hacking into unsuspecting businesses and stealing, destroying, or even hijacking information uh, systems. Most business businesses cannot afford to employ expensive tech departments or install expensive firewalls and other software to counter these cyber criminals. But there is less expensive measure we can take by always purchasing genuine software and refusing to purchase pirated or counterfeit software. That's why we are here today for Microsoft to listen and to the concerns of SMEs and then discuss what can be done, or shall I say, 
way forward. Why Microsoft? Well, well for over 20 years, Microsoft has been a leader in, the, in providing customers with solutions that simplify the way businesses work every day, and it is trusted by customers to enable their employees to be more productive through software. Microsoft has brought much standardization to the world of personal computers and by extension influenced the way businesses are conducted and uh, the way communication is done. By all accounts, Microsoft's Windows is the most used software by SMEs in our region. Indeed, Microsoft has provided, provided employment opportunities to our youth, and I would like to congratulate them for this. Since we all know youth unemployment is one of the major issues facing our societies today. Deceptive and non-deceptive counterfeit Microsoft products it is important to know that there are two types of counterfeit products. Dece deceptive counterfeiting takes place when or where the, co uh, the consumer does not know that they have purchased counterfeit products. In this, case, in this instance, the packaging is the same or similar to that of a genuine Microsoft product and the consumer is unaware that they have being cheated at the time of purchase, what I would call a product of ignorance. In contrast, non-deceptive counterfeiting is where the consumer willingly buys a product knowing it, it to be counterfeit. Both counterfeit products are, of course, illegal under Section 24, Subsection 1 and 2 of Cybercrime Act of 2015, which says, a person shall not use a computer system to violate intellectual property rights protected under any law. And section, Subsection 2 says, a person who contravenes Section Subsection 1, commits an offense, and in case of infringement, if it's non-commercial, it's liable to a fine of not less than 5 million shillings or to imprisonment for a term of not less than three years or both. In the case of commercial basis, then is liable to a fine of not less than 25 million shillings or to imprisonment for a term of not less than five years or both. Ladies and gentlemen, why then would someone no willing buy a counterfeit product? Several reasons spring to mind. But the most important is that journey products are more expensive than counterfeit products, and most businesses, business persons are drawn towards getting the cheapest deal and making what they, they perceive to be an immediate saving. Another reason is the difficulty of obtaining genuine products compared to the relative ease of accessing counterfeit products. Many counterfeit products can be easily downloaded for free with tutorials on how to install and use the product while genuine products require specialist stores with packages which sometimes do not have a full set of installation instructions. This goes hand in hand with the aggressive marketing strategies used by those supplying and counterfeit, supplying counterfeit products. They use enticing pop-ups and send frequent emails to both customers with signed up accounts or even to random accounts. 
Another reason is the lack of consumer knowledge about products, a lack of documentation, differentiating counterfeit and genuine products. In Tanzania, the computer illiteracy rate is high and very often consumers are unable to differentiate between a genuine and a counterfeit product. What then are the effects of using counterfeit soft, uh, softwares? As I've already ex noted, the biggest motive for purchasing counterfeit software is the monetary saving. However, this initial saving actually ends up being much more costly because counterfeit software is often laced with the dangerous malware, spyware, or other potential dangerous codes that may steal a user's personal or final information without his or her concern. In fact, cyber criminals use this method to prey on computer users who are unaware of the potential danger. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to quote David Finn, the Associate General Counsel in the Microsoft Cybercrime Center, who said as follows. I quote, the cybercrime reality is that counterfeiters are tampering with the software code and lacing it with malware. Some of these malware records some of this malware records a person's every key stroke, allowing cyber criminals to steal a victim's personal and financial information, or remotely, remotely switch on an infected computer's microphone and video camera, giving cyber criminals eyes and ears in boardrooms and living rooms. I would like just to spend a minute or so to give you my views of the way forward. I believe that this roundtable will raise the concerns which beset SMEs and propose the solutions, but I would like to briefly suggest as follows. One, Microsoft consider reducing the price by streamlining their products. Two, Microsoft educate businesses and individuals about the legal use of software and the risks involved in using counterfeit software. Three, Microsoft should target those who supply these counterfeit products as this may help to reduce the selling of counterfeit products and encourage individuals to obtain genuine products. And four, Microsoft should incorporate codes that are designed to inform the vendor when pirated copies of softwares are being used or when its it software is being used in another manner that violates the terms of the software license. Participants. One of the issues which the Tanzania Private Sector Foundation, TPSF, which I chair, has vigorously been fighting is piracy and counterfeiting. We have seen all kinds of products being pirated, including drinks, foods, and even drugs. Many businesses in Tanzania have gone under because of the unfair competition which they face from piracy and counterfeits. According to research carried out by Confederation of Tanzania Industries, CTI, Tanzania loses over a trillion shillings every year due to counterfeits.